A woman tried to smuggle 29 turtles into Canada. A woman was arrested for casting spells and dismembering family members. And studies show the majority of American houses are haunted, so say the homeowners. These are the weird stories on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in your universe, I think. A woman pleads guilty to trying to smuggle turtles across a lake into Canada. This story is out of Burlington, Vermont. A lovely, beautiful place. If you've never been to Burlington, you should go, especially if you like trees. A woman from China pleaded guilty to attempting to smuggle 29 turtles. Uh, They were very specific turtles called Eastern Box Turtles. I've never heard of them, but apparently they're a protected species. This woman from China was trying to smuggle these eastern box turtles across a Vermont lake into Canada by kayak. So she was smuggling turtles in a kayak. Well, that's not a sentence you hear every day. What are you guilty of? Smuggling turtles in a kayak. Oh, if that's not just the cutest crime ever committed. What's your name, darling? Her name is Wan Ni Inga. Yeah, the last name is Inga. It's an N and a G. There's not even a vowel in there. I don't know what to do with that. I think it's Inga. Did I do that right? Can anybody uh, help me out here? Inga. And now Miss Inga is 41 years old. She was arrested at an Airbnb as she was about to get into an inflatable kayak with a duffel bag on a, on a lake. It was called Lake Wallace. Uh, Agents had been notified by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police that two other people, including a man who was believed to be her husband, had started to paddle an inflatable watercraft from the Canadian side of the lake toward the United States. Wait a minute, I thought she was smuggling them into the States. I'm, I'm sorry, into Canada from the States. Now it sounds like she was smuggling them from Canada into the States. Either way, we got a Chinese couple that's for some reason, into turtle smuggling. These turtles must be worth a lot of money if you're going to smuggle them. Now, uh, apparently the agents searched Miss Ngu, Miss Ngu, <laughs> Miss Ngu, Ngu, her heavy duffel bag belonging to Ngu, and found 29 live eastern box turtles individually wrapped in socks. Socks. I guess they were very nice and warm and cozy in there. It's, it's chilly in Vermont, so you want to wrap your smuggled turtles in some socks. Eastern box turtles are known to be sold on the Chinese black market for $1,000 each. Wow, $1,000 each. I didn't know you could get $1,000 for little turtles. Are they uh, related to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? uh, Who wouldn't want a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, right? Now it says uh, Lou's cell phone was seized and a search by law enforcement found communications showing that she tried to smuggle the turtles into Canada. So she was trying to smuggle them into Canada. So they could, they could eventually be sold for a profit in Hong Kong. She pleaded it guilty and is uh, scheduled to be sentenced in December and faces up to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, there's a lot of bizarre smuggling stories that I've covered on Weird AF News. People smuggle strange things. And then I'm, I'm always so surprised to learn that these strange things are actually worth money out there in the world. Like, like a cow dung, apparently is worth something. I think it might be from a specific cow. But yeah, I covered a story of people trying to smuggle cow dung on a plane. Snakes in the pants have been a thing on planes. Little snakes in, in the pants. It's just very, very strange what people will smuggle. Now, these turtles that we have here probably have medicinal properties. Or maybe they're featured in a turtle soup in Asia. I, I'm not proud of it, but I, I've tried turtle soup in Singapore. I'm I'm so sorry, guys. I I did that. I know people get a little bent out of shape about the turtles, the turtles being eaten. But um, y- you know, I I don't know if the turtle I ate is even endangered, so it can't be that bad. I mean, I I don't want to eat endangered things, of course, you know. And I certainly don't want to partake in shark fin soup because I I've heard that they only take the fin and they discard the rest of the shark. Big wasteful industry that is, and very cruel. So, but I, I did eat the turtle soup. I got to tell you, I, 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 that turtle soup made me, wow, I really got my engine going. I don't, I don't know what's in that, but man, I, I felt like I could run a marathon after I ate that and, and beat up a horse. 
I felt like I could beat up a horse and and run a marathon. Like if you ever want to feel like the Incredible Hulk without uh, taking very strong amphetamines, you know, I, I recommend the turtle soup personally. A woman known for casting spells was arrested by police who find cooked human body parts inside her home. This story is not for the faint of heart. It's going to probably be gruesome. There's cooked human body parts involved. Perhaps cannibalism? Uh, I guess we'll find out. But uh, if you wanted to skip this one, I, I understand. Um, but it is, it, it is Halloween, and in the spirit of Halloween, I think it's kind of okay to do a gruesome story here. Uh, this woman's a Kentucky woman. Uh, Kentucky women, watch out. They cast spells, man, among other things. Kentucky woman was arrested after the police found dismembered body parts partially cooked inside her home. Well, I mean, uh, some people just take Halloween decorations a little too far, you know. The gruesome discovery was made by a man who had been hired to work on the home. If you're going to hire someone to come and work at your house, maybe hide the body parts that you're cooking. Anybody ever think of that? I'm going to guess this woman's uh, not okay, and I'm going to guess there's some serious drugs involved. And it's con- being it, it, that it's Kentucky, it's probably methamphetamines, drugs and drug paraphernalia. When the worker arrived at the property, he couldn't find the homeowner, but then came across a dismembered body in the backyard. In the backyard, just out in the yard. <laughs> at first, he thought the remains were Fields's. I guess that's the woman who owns the home. Her name is Trudy Fields. He called the police. Officers attended the property and found a woman's body on a bloodstained mattress. Troopers then spotted a second bloodstained mattress that had been dragged toward the back of the house. After discovering another woman inside the house, the police attempted to speak with her, but she allegedly refused to acknowledge them or allow them entry, forcing them to procure search warrants. The police returned at 11 p.m. with a search warrant. However, Fields refused to comply to multiple demands for her to leave the home, and uh, that forced them to remove Fields from the home and arrest her. After taking her into custody, the police discovered that parts had been removed from the body outside and were stuffed into a folded-up mattress. Fields was taken into custody. She had blood on her face, blood on her hands, blood on her clothing. They found a stainless steel pot containing body parts that appeared to have been cooked in an oven. In an oven, baking parts. Mm. The police have not publicly identified the remains. The construction worker who discovered the body told the police that Fields had been on the property during one of his previous visits and had been, quote, casting spells on them and was being confrontational. Uh, Okay, so (laughs) this construction person, funny, funny, goes to work on the house... The, the the woman's casting spells on him and then uh, for some reason returns. You cast some spells on me when I'm, I'm working on your property. I ain't going back. I'm not finishing the job. Nah, you won't be seeing me again. All right, the article has some more details about the, the gruesome scene within the house. I don't, I don't think we need to hear any more. You know, already I'm wishing I didn't know how to read after getting halfway through this. Yeah, I think the most shocking part of this story, though, is that... Uh, this witch slash tweaker owns a home. I mean, how, how how is this even possible? I can't own anything. This this spell casting, body part eating lady owns a home. Where am I at in my life? Let's rock. The majority of American houses are haunted. Homeowners say. Nearly two-thirds of American homeowners believe that their house is haunted, according to a new survey. The survey is by Angie, a service to help people find home service providers. Angie found that 60% of homeowners believe that they may be living with ghosts. I don't know how credible this uh, Angie is, nor the survey. I wouldn't necessarily call this science. Of the 1,000 homeowners surveyed, more than 65% claim to have experienced unexplainable occurrences inside their homes. About 31% reported hearing unexplained sounds in the walls. 30% reported creaking floorboards. And 24% reported hearing unexplained footsteps. Another 10% uh, claimed getting a massage from a spirit. And another 5% said a spirit made them a meal of tamales. Very strange. No, I made up the second two. But what are we talk? What are we doing, guys? This is ridiculous. Just because you have sounds in your house doesn't mean 
old homes creak, floorboards creak, wood expands. You're going to hear sounds in your walls if you have a big house. There's probably like a mouse in there or something. Why do you jump to the conclusion that it's a ghost? But, you know, we're dealing with Americans here, guys. And, you know, we're not really known for keeping it together. We just, you know, we love to just jump to the paranormal. We just very anti-science over here. Conspiracy theories, they just really thrive over here. They really do. Like bacteria in humidity. Uh, considering how many people in the U.S. believe that the government controls hurricanes, I'm surprised this is only 65% of the people saying they believe their house is haunted. Figured it'd be 85%. Uh, about 13% of the respondents reported seeing or hearing the toilet flush on its own. Ooh, how about that? Also, was your robot vacuum calling you the N-word? That says, Angie did know that there is a phenomenon called ghost flushing. Oh, have you guys heard of ghost flushing? I never heard of ghost flushing. Uh, I've heard of an upper decker. Do you guys know what an upper decker is? <laughs> oh, let me share this phenomenon with you. It's not It's not really paranormal. Uh, an upper decker is when uh, you want to pull a prank on somebody that you hate and you happen to be at their house for, let's say, I don't know, a house party. Or you broke in. Uh, what you do is you, you do a number two in the top of the toilet. Like you take the top lid off and do it in there. And then uh, the toilet's going to smell very, very bad and they're not going to know where it's coming from. That's called an upper decker. You're welcome. They say there is, though, a phenomenon called ghost flushing where the toilets will flush on their own due to a leak somewhere in the home's toilet. So it's a plumbing issue. It's not that a ghost is uh, urinating in your home. It says 20% of homeowners surveyed said they were scared of one or more parts of their home, such as their basement or attic. Uh, Nearly 60% say they would not like to be left home alone ever. Another 58% of the respondents said they would consider living in a haunted house if it meant saving money. No, I don't recommend that. I mean, the rent is too damn high, but you don't want to be living amidst a poltergeist. Haven't you seen the film? It's no bueno. You know, the most frustrating thing about living with a ghost, I would think, is they're, they're not even paying their fair share of the rent. Bunch of freeloaders usually, you know. You know, it's funny also that it's always houses. It's never apartments that are haunted. Why is that? So Ghosts wouldn't be caught dead living in an apartment. No pun intended. But it's always homes. And like, where did the ghosts haunt before we had homes? Was it caves? Were they haunting the caves? Oh, my cave is haunted. Is your cave haunted, Larry? Just very curious. Ships? You know, back in the day, humans spent a lot of time on ships. A lot of people died on ships. So, you know, is that a place where you find spirits as well? It's where they died, right? It's always where they died. What I don't get is when people see a ghost, why are they wearing the same clothing that they wore back in the day? You know, you, it seems strange to me. I always found that odd. Why they would just ditch. Why would you wear that old ass clothing as a ghost? You would think a spirit can't even wear clothing, right? You think it was, a spirit would just be like light or something or like a mist. That it wouldn't really have a human body. Never mind wearing clothes from 1812. Seems strange. Have you ever watched any of those ghost hunting shows? They never seem to find any ghosts. I'm always disappointed. Of course, they take out that sound meter and that just, that moves and they all get a boner over that. Like, ooh, look at the meter move. Ooh. (laughs) And then they think, they, they take photos, right? And they think the little orbs on the photos are spirits. They always do that too. I mean, that's so stupid. I've seen so many auras. I mean, that could be anything. Dust particles hitting the light. I mean, why would you think that that's a spirit? First of all, it's not It's not wearing clothing. <laughs> it's got to be wearing clothing from 1412. Now, I spent some time in one of the most famous haunted houses, supposedly, in Los Angeles. It's called the House on Cielo Drive. There's a documentary about it. There's It, it was on an episode of Ghost Hunters. Yeah, I was invited into that house on Halloween... And to be in, in attendance, with a to, to attend a, a seance as well in the basement. And nothing happened while I was there. I have to say, though, the owner of the house is a very strange man. You know, I enjoy him, but he's very strange. And so you always need to observe the messenger. That's so important. Observe the messenger. Because I think a lot of these hauntings aren't so much a real ghost situation as you have a person who's 
got confirmation bias or they're they're into conspiracies. They're already really into the paranormal and this is what they're looking for. They're just weird in general. You know, I think that needs to be taken into consideration. And as far as this survey goes and the article that I'm covering for the story, where over 60% of homeowners believe that they're living with ghosts, I mean, you could just say that the people that are using Angie that were surveyed are not all there. I mean, that's just too high, man. But I think this was an appropriate story to cover as we're uh, gearing up for Halloween. I'm going to look for more stories like this. You're probably wondering, Jonesy, have you ever seen a ghost? The answer is no. Unfortunately, I would love to. I've I've gone on many ghost tours, though, because I just find them very entertaining. And uh, whenever I go to a new city, I'll look up the ghost tours. And if I happen to have a night off from comedy, I will go on one. I love that. Well, hello, my uh, loyal listeners, fellow weirdos. I appreciate you spending some time with the podcast. Please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, if you could give it five stars, I would really appreciate that. That only takes about a second to do. And it helps out tremendously. So um, I would appreciate that. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, Thanks for emailing me. Everybody who sent me messages, appreciate it. You can always send me messages and uh, links to stories that you think are appropriate for the podcast. My email is funnyjones at gmail.com. Uh, You can also slide them into my DMs on Instagram, at Funny Jones, if you want to do that. I just want to give you a heads up. I'm in the state of Texas, and I'm going to be performing in Dallas starting Thursday, Thursday through Sunday. And uh, you can get tickets at tkscomedy.com. That's right, tkscomedy, tkscomedy.com. I'm going to be performing... From Thursday the 17th until Sunday, October 20th. Doing one show Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, one show Sunday. So please come through and say hi to me. I would love to meet you and um, and your loved ones. So yeah, bring grandma too. We'll have, uh, we'll, have we'll do shots, 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 shots at the bar. That's right. We'll do shots. Me, you, and your grandma. Anyways, um, just so you know, my comedy is a little edgy. So don't bring the kids, okay? Not to say I'm not dirty and I'm not offensive. It's just edgy. It's dark and edgy. That's how it is. Of course it's dark and edgy. I host a weird news podcast. You know, what what else would you think it would be? (laughs) Anyways, I hope to meet some of you. Um, And if you want to support the show, uh, there's a great way to do that. You can go to my website, weirdafnews.com, and you can buy Jonesy a coffee, which uh, I might spend on beer. Yeah, I might spend that money on beer. Not going to lie. Or you can also uh, join the Patreon. Patreon's a good thing to do because you get access to additional content. And right now in the Patreon, I'm uh, Jonesy's breaking down his uh, all of his uh, Halloween movie recommendations, the horror movie recommendations. Okay, I've posted three of them so far, so I'm gonna keep posting more. And I put the trailer in there, and I tell you where you can watch it. And I'm I'm digging deep. All right, these aren't mainstream horror movies. I'm not going to give you Hellraiser. I'm not going to give you, you know, The Evil Dead or Prince of Darkness or Chucky or Pet Cemetery. I love all of these movies, of course. Um, but no, I'm digging, I'm digging in the crates. I'm getting, mo- a lot of them are foreign horror movies that you've never heard of. Um, I enjoy a lot of a- horror movies from Asia specifically or uh, some of the best. So there's a lot of those suggestions, but yeah, I'm really great in the department of horror movies, uh, so my, you know I have good taste in in there, and so I have really great suggestions. So that's something you also get out of the Patreon for the rest of October. I'm giving you these horror movies that I recommend, and they're pretty good. So, and you could just watch the trailer and decide if you'd like to uh, go further with it as well, if you want to commit. Anyways, I'm rambling on and on and on per usual. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll let you go. Good luck with your life, man. <laughs>